I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. We know you can do it, and we're here to help. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today is How to Decorate Like a Designer. And if you've been listening here, you're probably already doing a lot of this already, but this is going to be a great masterclass on how to decorate and get that designer look without hiring one. But of course, you know, you can always have a consult with us if you need a little extra help. That's right. And But there's certain tips that designers know about that a lot of times other people don't know. So those are going to be what we're covering today are secrets and the secrets that a lot of other designers use when they're working on a house. Decorating like a designer doesn't mean creating a model home. That is not a designer look. It's appropriate for certain things like a hotel room or a model home, but you don't want your home to look like that. That's not what we're talking about today. This is really going to be a lot of tips and advice on how to get that very special, unique designer look. And when I say, you know, taking it up a notch, I don't necessarily mean in price point, but you'll understand as we go through what I mean by just taking your decorating up a notch and making it look like a designer came in and did it. And these things are so doable. So are you ready? Let's do it. My first tip is to add personality using vintage accessories. So when you look at a high-end designer home, you're going to notice a lot of one of the kind pieces that you're just not going to find at your local Target or Home Goods. And some of these things may be custom made and very expensive, but often they're just vintage. And these pieces are one of a kind. They're, they're something that not everyone has. You're not going to go down the street and see that your neighbor has exactly the same thing. Whereas if you shop at Target for everything, you're going to see it every th- third house probably. So this is going to be a way to really add some personality a very unique feel to your house. If you do not have a local source, I recommend going to some local resale shops, consignment stores, antique malls. If you don't have that or they're not you're not seeing what you like, Etsy and eBay are also great sources. They have all kinds of vintage and antique things and I thought I would also add what do I buy that that's vintage or antique. And here's just a few things that I I look for. Old silver trophies, old clocks, silver water pitchers, trinket jars with lids that are unique and unusual, cloches, glass bottles, white pitchers, vintage soup tureens, old candlesticks, and little vintage oil paintings. Oh, now you've got me wanting to go to my local antique mall, for sure. I love (laughs) your list. It's perfect. And I really love that you started out with adding personality, adding unique things, because that is really going to be the hallmark of getting this designer look. You want to add something that's really original and unique. And a lot of times those are things that really mean a lot to you. So it's also going to be expressing your personality. Some of you may work with designers, and I hope that you're working with a designer that riffs off your personality and what's important to you and the people that you live in the house with. So whether it's your prized possessions, your collections, your treasures, things that have sentimental value to you, these are things that a designer, either you, your own personal designer is you, or someone that you're working with should take into consideration when they're putting together the whole feel, the vibe, and the individual pieces that are going to make up your whole home. I was just with a new client the other day, and we were talking about all kinds of things that she wanted to do, from ripping out the kitchen to uh, removing 
dare I say, popcorn ceiling and whatnot. But she had a whole long list of things that she wanted to do. And then we sat down and talked about what would the palette be? Because a lot of things we were talking about were demolition and going to be dusty and really costly and all of that. I said, let's get back to some of the fun stuff. And she started telling me about the colors that she liked. And then I realized that she had a painting over her mantle that had all those colors in it. So I said, let's go in the living room for a second and take a look at this. And then she told me more about the painting. It had been painted by an artist for her parents. Well, that's the best starting point, something that's special. It, the colors work with where she wanted to go. So that is going to be our inspiration piece for the entire renovation of her beautiful condo. So it has these great pinks and reds and grays and blacks in it and these beautiful flowers. So that's where we're starting. And when the dust is falling from the popcorn ceiling, she can just focus on that for a little while. But it's going <laughs> to add such personality to her space. And mm-hmm. it's going to really really mean something. What a wonderful thought to use that as your jumping off point. It's so meaningful to her and it had all the beautiful colors that she loved. What's your first tip? I think it's really important to layer. Layering really does give off the designer feel because you're making that extra effort. You're combining things. You're adding additional textures. So whether you're talking about adding a rug on top of a sisal or you're laying something over the back of your sofa or you're arranging more than one pillow on a sofa or on a a chair. That's a great way to add a designer feel because it takes a little bit more effort. You're going to have to give it some consideration. It's going to look like it was really well thought out and that it was purposeful. And it just lends a whole different feel. Picture a room in your mind's eye that, you know, let's use gray because that's been so popular. So it's you know, a, sort of a gray wash floor, and then there's just a gray area rug, and then the sofa's gray, and then the pillows are various shades of neutrals. Well, that's nice, and it's kind of calming, but it's not that interesting. Now, you know, maybe layer on top of that gray rug, uh, you know, an interesting hide or a vibrant rug under the coffee table, and then maybe add a throw. And even if you want to stay in the neutrals, add something that's got a lot of heft and some texture to it. So not only is that tactile interesting, but it's interesting to your eye because of the textures. You know, add some pillows that are of different fabrics. All that is layering and that really lends to the designer feel. Oh, you're so right. And when we talk about textures and layers, we're not just talking about pillows and throws and cushions. We're also talking about even things like ceramic elements and metal elements and stained wood. You want lots of different materials in the room, different and different textures. So that's a great start to a beautiful room. And while we're talking about that, you started talking about the color in the room also Mm -hmm. about, you know, you were talking about layering with grays, but maybe you want to add some more color. So my next tip is to use color with caution. When you're adding color to a room, I think it's a great way to really pep it up, give it a wonderful vibe. Choose the colors that you love, but don't add every color under the sun. You really have to kind of choose a few of your favorites, maybe three or four, and go with that limited color palette. Limiting those colors to uh, three or four in a room is going to give the room a very cohesive, pulled together designer feel. And I'm going to go out there. I'm going out there on a limb, Kelly. I'm going to say- I'm this with is, you. <laughs> this is the one of the top tips that I have. Yes, I agree with you. That is a top tip. Color is wonderful. And when we're talking about color more and everyone is, definitely use bright colors in a really discerning, judicious way throughout your home. And I think that you that's an easier way for someone to get this real designer look rather than saturating everything in something that's super, super bright. Add one luxe item in each room. Now, again, it doesn't have to be a budget breaker, but just something that elevates everything. Eh, Maybe you invest in a cashmere throw. That's going to do a lot on the end of your sofa. And maybe in your bedroom, you invest in a really great sheet set 
which you should do anyway, because it's going to help you sleep. So in each room, try to introduce something, and it can be something super small, but just something that takes it all up, that really elevates the whole look. And we'll make the other things that are not quite as luxurious or not quite as expensive look better by having them in the same space and they're sort of companion things and they're elevating each other and then elevating the entire look. Those luxury items can be the stars in the room and then the things that aren't so wow can be more your supporting actors and and actresses. And while we're thinking about adding luxury to a room, uh, this brings me to my next point and that is to use restraint. Too much of something good can be not too good. So if you want to use some bold colors, maybe that works better in a pillow than on a wall. Elegance has a lot to do with restraint. In fact, I looked up the word elegance and there were three points to elegance. One, refinement, grace, and beauty in movement, appearance, or manners. Two, tasteful opulence in form, decoration, or presentation. Three, restraint and grace of style. So even the word restraint is in the definition of the word elegance. So elegance is not just about what you put in the room, but what you take out of the room or what you keep from putting in the room. So it's it's curation. That's key here. And use an edited hand. Well said. Was your picture next to the word elegance? Because, you know, what's that saying? (laughs) Your your picture's next to that in the dictionary. Because you're very elegant. Your home is very elegant. So I think that all of those things really could describe my friend Anita very well. Oh, thank you, darling. How about some out-of-the-box thinking? Be a bit bold. Do something different. Really consider the space. Everybody's home, even if you're in a cul-de-sac and all the houses look exactly the same, everybody's home can be completely different inside. So you've got four walls, you've got a ceiling and a floor. Well, the people next door do too, but you could treat yours completely differently. And it's what you had said earlier, Kelly. This is what makes it not look like a home in a catalog or a model home. Those homes may be done well, but they don't have the homeowner's personality in them. Yeah. So brainstorm like it's your job, you know, and you, and if you're listening to us, you enjoy doing that sort of thing. So really give it some thought and don't rush into it. Give yourself time, particularly if you haven't been in your home for too long, give yourself some time to live in it and really consider it. Sometimes I just sit in a room and I look around and think, Hmm, you know, how can I, what does this need? Or I'm kind of at the point now in my decorating of this home anyway, is, you know, what can I change? Because I've already done something just to shake it up a little bit. And sometimes it's just moving things around, but definitely brainstorm. Think about all the things that you could use that you have and things that you could, uh, you know, apply to the walls, colors that you could use, things that would really bring out your unique personality and give your home this sense that nobody else in the rest of the planet has these same things in this same arranged in the same way. That's so true, Kelly. You really need to spend some time daydreaming and blue sky thinking, what would I do with this house if I could do anything? And kind of think about, well, maybe I would add a library. Maybe I would add a conservatory. I mean, all these things, obviously, a lot of this stuff you're not going to do, but there might be some elements of that that you could add in. So you start with the sky's the limit, and then you scale it back to how can I add that sort of a feeling uh, without going you know, all the way. So maybe you could put in an extra window if you wanted a, a, a sunroom, for example. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but it all starts with dreaming. It all starts with that spark of creativity. So you've got to start there. My next tip is to add black to every room or at least some dark colors, because I think that's something that people don't think about is the fact that you need lights and darks in your room. Uh, And a few years ago, a lot of people were doing this thing with the with white, and they would do their whole rooms. Remember that, Kelly? Everything was white. Yes. Very floaty. Mm -hmm. Right. And it didn't, what you just said, 
is what I was thinking. It floated. It didn't get grounded. It, it, it was too light and it looked too ethereal. It, so it, they needed some darkness. They needed some black and or dark colors in there to balance out the room. Spray paint something black. See what it does to your room. And I can guarantee you it's going to improve it. So getting now to a little bit more nitty gritty, don't skimp on the window treatments. If you can't afford nice window treatments, then see if you can go without window treatments or save up. You know, if they, if your home came with ones that you don't like, don't run out and buy sort of mid-range or cheapo window coverings. Now, they might block the light. They might give you a little privacy. But what we're talking about today is how to decorate like a designer. So if you really want to decorate like a designer and have your home have that feeling that it's very well put together and curated, cheap window coverings is going to just crush those dreams because <laughs> they, they're just nothing good about cheap window treatments. And Kelly, and I, were you at my farm? I just, I'm taking down the old shades that are yellowing and falling apart. And I just did the bedroom and I ordered the rest of the farmhouse. So, oh my goodness, what a difference. And I have to agree with you a hundred percent. It looks so much better. Yes. And we talk a lot about foregoing window treatments. We'd prefer the natural light. I mean, we live in, uh, at least when Anita's in the city and in my home, we're close to neighbors. We need something on the windows, but I would rather if I was moving into a home or I'd been there for a while and I couldn't afford something that looked really good, I would just hold off and I'd, I'd you know, keep putting my money away and saving for really nice window treatments. And they don't have to be crazy expensive, like going to a dedicated custom drapery company. There's Smith & Noble. There's the Shade Store. There are a lot of other smaller companies, Barn & Willow. The fabric obviously makes a big difference as to the way they hang. This is not an episode about curtains and draperies per se. We can send you back and link to a lot of the other ones that we did about that particular topic. But if you want to decorate like a designer and have a designer look, then you're really going to have to invest a little bit in the window coverings. There are a lot of other places that you can save, but I don't think you can save and still achieve a good designer look with respect to your window coverings. I'm sorry, I'm just going to draw that line in the sand. Unless you're an excellent seamstress and you make your own. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot co slash DTT and use the code DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, 
but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Another tip or designer secret is take your time. I think this is when we end up making really bad decisions is when we feel like we have got to get this done this week or we just moved in and boy, it better look right at the end of the month. You're rushing out, you're making quick decisions, you're buying stuff because it's in front of you, not because it's the best thing. So really take your time, space it out, enjoy the process. I think there's a lot to be said for enjoying the process and not, and not just enjoying the end result. And I think you're going to end up with a much better design room if you take your time. If you do it in bulk, you really don't have the opportunity to continue thinking about it, continue the brainstorming and rift off one piece and then figure out how or what you should add next. So that's a really good way to curate your own designer look. Because even if it's all expensive, you buy it all at once, it's done. You don't really then have the opportunity to say, oh, well, now I see this in my space and what it really needs is, you know, a, a low hourglass metal side table. But I didn't know that when I bought them all together because I didn't see them in the space. So I really like to step into my decorating pretty slowly. A, I like to use things that I have already in different ways. And then I like to incorporate new pieces after I've given it a lot of consideration as to how I'm going to use the room and how I ultimately want it to look. Exactly what you said, enjoy the process because mm -hmm. it's so much fun doing what we love to do, right? Absolutely. Update your hardware. Like the lampshades, old, sort of not cool old, you know, not antique, vintage, but just kind of outdated hardware really doesn't do anything for your overall look. And if it's in a kitchen or if it's in a, something that you've got built in and there's got a lot of cabinets and doors, you know, even though it's a small piece, you're seeing it over and over again, it is going to impact your overall look. So, and that's an inexpensive thing that you can do. You don't have to spend a lot of money on hardware. And if, if it's just the fact that you have a finish that you don't like anymore, well, then just take them off and spray paint them. And that could give it a totally different look. Another tip uh, is to not be a perfectionist, which if you are a perfectionist, I know this isn't going to be easy, but you know, Winston Churchill said, perfection is the enemy of progress. So if you have the analysis paralysis, you're going to get stuck. Uh, and sometimes we see this with clients where they think it ha they have to buy a particular thing and then they get stuck because for some reason they can't get that and they have a difficult time moving forward. So, you know, if something's not working out, see if there's something else that might work and try to figure out what would rather than feeling like you have to stick 100 percent to your original plan, be open to changes, especially if you're looking at vintage things or one of a kind things, you may have to bend a little bit because maybe what you saw on Pinterest just isn't available. So I think there's a lot to be said for really working to have a beautiful home, but not focused on making it perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Let's uh -oh, did I one. hit a, uh-oh. <laughs> no, no. I think I, 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 
I'm a little, I'm type A for sure. You know, let's just be honest. I know I am. I like things a certain way. Uh, and I tend well, me too, to be, for sure. a, yeah, and I tend to be, you know, perfect. I don't know if that's the word. I'm, I'm definitely not perfect. That's not what I'm saying, but I don't, I don't know that I strive for perfection, but I have a certain, you know, I want to achieve a certain look in my home. And I, so I don't know, is that striving for perfection? Well, I think if you're making progress, I I think, I think that's great. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting it to be a certain way. What I'm suggesting is if it's taking you six, six months to pick out a white paint color for your house, maybe, maybe it's time to, to move on and make that decision. Maybe it's the idea of knowing what your air quote perfect is. Now we're getting really sort of metaphysical, aren't we? Uh, oh, we were, went from very specific change your hardware possibly to something out, a little more out there. But yeah, what is you know what is your air quote perfect? You know, at some point you have to make a decision. So if you maybe if you figure out what your perfect is or what your level of perfect is or your level of decorating, whatever word you want to put in there then it's easier to make the decision rather than sort of not knowing. And I think taking the time, bringing it back to that great tip of taking the time, that gives you the opportunity to know what that answer is, right? To know what the perfect white is, to know what the perfect sofa is and whatever that perfect is for you, right? So I don't know, am am I getting a little too woo-woo out there? But (laughs) I I don't want anyone to be paralyzed by all the decisions that you have to make. Just take your time, figure out what really is going to work for you, and then, you know, research it and listen to our back episodes. And we have answers to mostly all these questions after 543 episodes, right? You know, you can, if you want to know what the right white is, we've got the episode for you. Here's another very specific one. Avoid clutter at all costs. Oh, you, yes. You've heard us say this before, but it is worth saying because there is no way in the world that you can decorate like a designer if you've got too much stuff. And that stuff could just even be too much nice furniture. Avoid clutter, obviously, if it's just really clutter, like out of season things and whatnot, get rid of it. But take the time, be in the room. Is there too much furniture in here? What would it feel like if X and Y were gone? Try that. Move some stuff out. And I think you're going to like it a lot more because designers do embrace some negative space. Ooh, that's like a saying. I could put that on a pillow or something. But didn't that rhyme? (laughs) I, I love that. Another thing is if you are going for a neutral look, you know, we love neutral rooms. But a neutral room does not mean no color. That's something that I see a lot of where someone said, I'm going to go neutral and there's not a sprig of color in the room. That's not what that means. That means your foundation pieces are a neutral color, but you're still going to add some color with artwork, with maybe a rug, with pillows. Just like I said, every room needs some black. Every room needs some color somewhere, even if you just do it in the rug and the artwork. It needs something in the room. I think the real jump out tips here today are taking your time, the limited colors, of course, but the personality, right? The Really, the bottom line is trying to bring your personality through. It's really key. And it's sort of counterintuitive when you think about like hiring a designer to give your home your personality. So only you can do that the best way possible. And we are hoping that we're giving you the confidence, right, that you can do that. So hopefully all these tips really resonated with everyone and that you'll take the time to think out of the box and consider your space and make it your own. Anita, what are we defining today? Today, I thought we would define Davenport, sofa, and couch. Because they can mean the same thing, but do they really? Oh, I am on the edge of my seat. (laughs) Okay. So couch is a 17th and 18th century term for a daybed or a long upholstered seat for reclining. So the word comes from the old French verb couche, which means to lie down. So because of that, the term couch was primarily used to describe a piece of furniture used for reclining 
were sleeping like a chaise longue. So it Can you say that one actually... more time? That's a sad. <laughs> a chaise longue. Chaise longue. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it originally did not have any arms. So it wasn't used as a term for a sofa until recently. So the word couch is used in Australia, North America, and South Africa to describe a sofa. And when you think of couch, a couch, it usually describes a comfortable, informal seating where you might watch movies. And think of the word couch. It, it's informal. And think of it with the word slouch. So that's some place that you would slouch and relax. Oh, that's so good. A, yeah. So a Davenport was originally the name of a series of sofas made by the Massachusetts furniture manufacturer, A.H. Davenport and Company in the late 1800s. And since it was such a popular model, the name stuck to describe. Oh, that's so interesting. It's like Kleenex. It's That's what I was going to say. It's like Kleenex. So Davenport was a specific model of sofa, but it came to mean sofa. Unless you're in the UK where a Davenport is a writing desk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just okay. listened to something and they it was a British person and an American person on a podcast and they were saying thing and that oh, so many different words for the same thing and they were like yes we're divided by our common language because there <laughs> are so many so things right that was different oh yeah cushion and pillow a jumper yeah. oh you know, yeah the boot all that that's stuff. on your sweater right <laughs> okay. I know I know okay so a sofa the term sofa originated in the 1620s, and it referred to a raised section of a floor covered with carpets and cushions, and it's from the Turkish word sofa or the Arabic suffa, S-U-F-F-A-H, which was a stone bench or a couch. So there's also a definition in 1717 that refers to a long seated seat for reclining as the definition of the word sofa. So sofa can mean couch, but couch is a term that is used pretty much just in North America, Australia, and South Africa, where the term sofa is used more often in the United Kingdom, Ireland, and India to really describe the same thing, basically. But just to keep in mind, just as a summary, <laughs> if you're slouching, it's a couch. Okay. If it's a designer piece, it's a sofa. And if you're really old, it's a Davenport. <laughs> okay. That's perfect. Okay. So I guess the more Victorian lined sofa, or I shouldn't call it anything. I guess the more Victorian lined piece that I have in my living room that I had reupholstered would be a sofa because you can't really slouch. You can recline, ah. but you can't slouch. But then the sectional we have out in the family room is a couch. Is that right? Got it. Yes. Yes. I think you got it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> she got it. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold at the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. 
Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, well, since I'm talking about reclining and slouching and all of this, I'm going to share my crush today that is the sleepfoundation.org. Now, I stumbled upon this because I was looking for a mattress in a box. And I had no idea how to figure out which one was better other than, you know, I'm seeing more ads for this one than the other one. And I was doing some research and seeing if I could find some blogs or blah, blah, blah. But then I stumbled upon sleepfoundation.org. And it is an independent website. And it is about sleep. It's not like they're trying to sell you a mattress. And it's almost like consumer reports, but just for mattresses and sleep-related things. So I thought it was fascinating. So they had all different... uh, types of mattresses. So I was able to focus and narrow on the bed in the box ones, the mattress in the box ones, but you could do, did you want to be organic? And obviously the various sizes and whatnot. I thought it was very helpful and they have these, you know, reviews and they are, you know, as I said, they are not sponsored by any of these companies. So it is all independent reviewers. They have a lot of people that I guess volunteer to slouch, recline sleep on these various mattresses <laughs> and they so and then they and then they question them as to how they felt and the the type of sleep that they had and whatnot so it's filled with great info and i think buying a mattress is one of those mysterious things in life because maybe even if you go to the mattress store do you really know that because you feel awkward laying on the bed so it's just a nice resource to know about i i kind of put it in the same line of that um environmental working group uh, app that i I enjoy so much the one that gives you a lot of information about whether the products you're buying are toxic and whatnot so this oh, right. sleep foundation is along the same lines so sleepfoundation.org that sounds very helpful i thought you fell asleep on me go ahead yes <laughs> I, uh, well i was getting a little uh... <laughs> so what's your crush Oh, my crush is a video i found on youtube it's a video of betty bearden pardee's home in Newport, Rhode Island. And it is gorgeous, very French. And the gardens were stunning. I think you'll really like it if you check it out, Kelly. And the channel that showed her home is called Homeworthy, which I had not heard of them before. But it is a beautiful video. So is this a current home with a current garden? Or is this in some time in the past? Oh, I think it was filmed currently. I, I, I don't know when she built it. But yeah, I think. I think oh, I was because I was thinking about all the Newport mansions, and you know, so many of them are you know now just museums and whatnot. So this is someone's home right now. I think it was filmed a year ago, and that's pretty current. I think yeah. she built it. That's right, and she does appear to still live there. And right, and she based it on a lot of these older homes that were so beautiful okay. there. Okay, so she wasn't like pals with Mrs. Vanderbilt. She is a current person. <laughs> yes, there yes, now. exactly. Oh, oh, I'm excited to go see that. Thanks for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, I think you'd like it because, yeah, because it has the gardens too. And I know you love beautiful gardens. And what a treat to have a house where you look out the windows and see this beautiful oh. vista of a garden. Have you ever visited Newport? I have Rhode not. Island? Oh, you would love it. Oh, it's so beautiful. You would love it. 
being all elegant okay. and everything like you are, he'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Road oh. trip. Yep. All right. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.